Let's talk about Armenia. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm I'm glad to I'm glad to come on and talk about it. It's been crazy because it's been such a uh, insane news week with the in America the talk of um, political uncertainty with the transition and the election, um, with the roiling news cycle from the debate now into the president having coronavirus, and unfortunately, uh, it seems it's quite plausible that Azerbaijan and Turkey were totally aware that the world media attention would be on the presidential debate in the United States and may have even chosen this moment to launch this recent new war on Armenia. Um, it's a, it's, it's a terrible thing that this tiny underdog country of Armenia has gone through. I have Armenian heritage. Um, I, I, so I, I, I know I, I follow the news. I know what's happening. It does not get a lot of attention in U S media. It gets some attention in like European right. media, but honestly, the BBC, the BBC is uh, only concerned about oil pipelines in the region and stuff. So their coverage is really bad. Um, and nobody, like Emmanuel Macron actually was impressive. He, he, let it be known that uh, France would not accept a uh, military conquest of Azerbaijan against uh, Artsakh, the Armenian region that's the source of the contention. He, he said that uh, France would not accept a Turkish and Azerbaijani invasion of Artsakh, uh, which was nice to hear a world leader say. By and large, the Armenian people have been totally alone. The Armenian people have suffered so much for centuries just over a hundred years ago there was the armenian genocide um where the ottoman turks of the ottoman empire attempted to basically extinguish the entire armenian ethnicity that was a, a genocide that happened between 1915 and then in subsequent years after that during world war one and basically the vast majority of the traditional armenian homeland uh, th where the Armenian people are the indigenous people who evolved there, uh, were wiped out. They were wiped out in their own indigenous homeland uh, because Turkish nationalists during World War I decided, like, we can't have any ethnic minorities. Um, and so there's this tiny remnant of Armenia that was just where the Russians controlled in, at the end of World War I, so the Turks couldn't get there. And that's what Armenia is today. And it fell under Soviet control for 70 years. And Joseph Stalin uh, infamously uh, cut off uh, the ethnic Armenian uh, area of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh and gave it to Azerbaijan. Uh, so I think because, Georgians. Yes, because <laughs> that's... Can't I mean, trust a Georgian. <laughs> you like I, like Jim, McCall, Jim McCall always says, can't trust a Georgian as far as I can throw him. <laughs> you can't you can't trust the Georgian if they're in Atlanta or if they're on the wrong side of the Caucasus. <laughs> um, this is something the Armenians say is that is that uh, Stalin, being an ethnic Georgian, had like rivalry issues with the Armenians and wanted to keep them down, and so took like a majority Armenian area, Artsakh, and made it the Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan. In any case, um, the, Turkey to this day does not recognize that what they did in World War I was a genocide against the Armenians. Uh, they simultaneously, have, they don't have a very well thought out denial <laughs> argument because simultaneously they say it didn't happen and that it's good that it did happen and that yeah. they would do it again. Yeah. So the, the Turkish policy is like, watch out, we'll genocide you like we did 100 years ago, which we didn't do. When we never did, yeah. But, but we'll do it again. Right. But this um, time it'll be real. And Azerbaijan follows suit because Azerbaijan's basically the Turkic people, Turkic ethnicity that was under Russian rule for several hundred years. And so they feel a great affinity for Turkish people of what is now Turkey in Anatolia. Um, so there's this extermination, there is to this day an exterminationist anti-Armenian racism uh, 
on the part of not all, but many uh, Turkish nationalists and uh, Azerbaijani nationalists, Azeri nationalists. And um, you don't have to even take an Armenian's word for that. You can you, you can literally go to any active social media page from uh, any of thousands of Turkish nationalist or Azerbaijani nationalist Twitter accounts. And what they'll be saying over and over again is the Armenians aren't a real people. They don't deserve any country or homeland at all. We're going to conquer Yerevan. Um, we're going to do a genocide again. They're openly exterminationist rhetoric. And that's like, that's like their side. And the Armenian right. side is we would like to live in the a small sliver that is left over of the uh, indigenous homeland that we evolved in for Bunch thousands of, of years. Princesses. So yeah, that's the that's the sort of like large context for what's happening in the short term. Very recently, what happened is um, there's a standstill between Azerbaijan and Armenia since the 1990s when. Azerbaijan, as soon as the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, Armenia declared independence. All the other little republics, including Azerbaijan, declared independence. Immediately, there were ethnic pogroms against Armenians in the Azerbaijan capital of Baku. Uh, deadly, uh, um, uh, deadly pogroms. Um, because in Soviet times and even before then, there was like uh, different ethnicities living in each other's countries and cities and stuff. And then there was an attempted and attempted mass uh, massacres in Nagorno-Karabakh, which is the Armenian ar enclave. And then the Armenians uh, of that area were backed up by the neighboring Armenian Republic. And together, the Armenian people said, no, you're not going to do it. We're not going to sit here and let you pogrom us. We're not going to let you massacre us. So uh, they rose up and they created their own autonomous republic. And it happened at the same time that the Soviet Union collapsed. Um, and so there is an autonomous Armenian Republic of Artsakh that is adjacent to the Republic of Armenia. And the, the, in, Ar Azerbaijan still claims it um, as part of their territory. And so what happened, it's, it, there's been a flare up over and over again over the years. Azerbaijan and Turkey have a big pipeline that's funded by British Petroleum. The, uh, that goes around Armenia, but it goes very close to where Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh is. Um, Turkey has had a blockade of Armenia for 25 years or something, or almost 30 years since the first uh, uh, Armenia-Azerbaijan war. Uh, so the border of Armenia is closed on both sides between Azerbaijan and Turkey. Their neighbors to the north, Georgia, are not very friendly, even though it's a Christian nation. It's it's it there's a there's a um religious quality to this dispute, but it's not really a religious conflict, it's more of an ethnic conflict. Mm -hmm. So the Georgians are like Christians like the Armenians, but they 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 they're they they do not help, they don't they don't really they're not uh, friends. So Armenia is like totally landlocked and isolated with hostile two genocidally hostile neighbors on the east and the west. An indifferent neighbor to the north, Georgia, that doesn't want to help at all. Uh, Iran is the only country that borders them that open that has a road open that actually will supply them with anything. And Russia doesn't have a border, but they, you know, there's airplane flights and there there is a, a defense treaty with Russia, but they use Armenia as like a bargaining chip in their geopolitical strategies with Turkey and stuff. They're never really out to help the Armenian people. Uh, and this can be seen now with this current war where Azerbaijan and Turkey held uh, war games like a month ago in Azerbaijan with the explicit. It was a, it was a, a rehearsal for the current war. Uh, it was a rehearsal for invading Armenia. Um, and this comes at a time when Turkey is currently at war with almost all of its neighbors. Turkey is now at war with Armenia. Uh, not just by proxy, the Turkish Air Force is violating Armenian airspace proper uh, and has been for several days now, let alone the military uh, coordination that they're helping out Azerbaijan with. Um, they're also involved in the war in Libya, uh, threatening an out-and-out -out war with Egypt, and they're still involved with their military occupation of Syria and northern Iraq and 
their um, internal conflict with their ethnic Kurdish minority. And also, they've been threatening a war with Greece and Cyprus and France over uh, Mediterranean oil drilling rights. Uh, Erdogan is the dictator of Turkey, and he wa- he likes war. He likes war. And, he, and I think the international community is starting to see this, that the state of Turkey today is controlled by a nationalist madman who is trying to start wars everywhere because they're economy's in trouble the turkish lira is collapsing in an epic fashion and it's it's it keeps collapsing further than anyone thought it could and um and so in this context is what happened is that you know they had war games they planned for the invasion and then uh a week ago it's been one week uh, azerbaijan launched a, a surprise attack on karabakh and also uh positions in the republic of armenia um Karabakh is the Azerbaijani word and the Armenian word is Artsakh. So it's, I'll say Artsakh. Um, so they launched a surprise attack and made some very minimal gains initially. And then uh, the Armenians have been fighting tooth and nail against uh, Armenia is a country of, I believe, 3 million people, or less than 3 million people. Uh, the Republic of Artsakh is like a population of 150,000. Azerbaijan is a country of 10 million. And this is to say nothing of their allies right over the border of, uh, or just, you know, right a hop over Armenia, their allies, Turkey is a huge country with one of the biggest militaries in the world. Armenia is up against a, uh, a three to one, uh, more than a three to one uh, population disadvantage and a great disadvantage in military uh, materiel and um, weapons. Um, uh, Azerbaijan is backed up uh, by uh, uh, and, and sold weapons by a lot of major powers in the world. Um, and the Armenians have fought them off. This underdog country, uh, against all odds, with no help and very little news coverage, because it's, <laughs> to Americans, it's like, eh, it sounds like uh, too far away, Stan, for me to care about it. Right. And yeah, well, I don't care how many people, I don't care how many millions of people die. <laughs> um it, it's daytime there when it's nighttime over here right. snooze yeah and so we ignore it and we ignore it and we ignore it and unfortunately the turkish nationalists and the azeri nationalists see that the west ignores their aggressions and that um encourages them to keep it up so we have now seen a week of terrible attacks from Azerbaijan against Armenia and Armenian Artsakh. Uh, and they have failed on the battlefield largely. Against all odds, the Armenians stopped them on the battlefield uh, with some uh, incredible bravery and, and cleverness. And so Turkey and Azerbaijan are getting angry that their plan is failing. And yesterday and today, they have switched to more of attack, uh, more of a tactic of just directly attacking civilian populations, which is just it's yes, if you could say yeah, it's a war crime. Everything they've done has been a war crime. They're right. they're targeting journalists. They're firing heavy rockets from uh, residential air from civilian areas, which is a war crime. It's human shielding, uh, human shields. They're firing heavy rockets at the Artsakh capital of Stepanakert at residential areas, at homes, deliberately, because they're getting angry that they're not making the um, progress that they wanted to on the ground, on the battlefield. So they're now they're deciding like, all right, well, if we're not going to win this war that way, we're going to extract a price of human lives from you by attacking children and civilians in their homes. And so that's what's happening now, miraculously, the Armenians have, uh, uh, they're in their bunkers, they're fighting back, they're fighting tooth and nail. In many ways, it is a um, it is a fight for the survival of Armenia. It's a fight for the survival of Armenia because um, I think the Western media is waiting for like, oh, I gotta wait to see if it gets worse before I yeah. take a side on this. If it gets any worse, the only way it could get any worse than it is now is if there's a major genocidal event uh, where a 
major Armenian populated city gets taken over or some disaster like that, which would immediately result in a massacre. Because unfortunately, there's almost no exceptions. Uh, when Turkish nationalists or Turkish backed mercenaries enter a city, the first thing that goes is the Armenian population because there is an irrational, insane ethnic hatred that goes back centuries. Um, now that I mentioned it with the mercenaries, that was another thing, another war crime that they've committed. <laughs> Turkey has been flying plane loads of its hired mercenaries from its dirty war in Libya to Azerbaijan, paying them $1,000 a month uh, to explicitly these terrorists, Turkish-backed terrorists from Libya, explicitly paying them to fight Azerbaijan's war for them and uh, attack Armenians, who did nothing to deserve this who did nothing to deserve this, who simply evolved in an area that was has been conquered a bunch of times. I mean, the Armenian people are ancient. It's an older, it's an older culture than the ancient Rome. They were, they, if you go read ancient Roman politics, like on their Eastern border, they're dealing with Armenians. 